And welcome everybody to another episode of Finns Nation. I am your host, Lewis Song, and I am joined by my co-host on the Pulse of Finns Nation, Ron Caniff, who has a dissenting opinion on the Jonathan Taylor discussion. Yesterday, I talked about Jonathan Taylor and why I feel like the Miami Dolphins would not be the best course of action for them to go ahead and acquire him because more than likely what they would have to give up because the Indianapolis Colts, I sincerely doubt, are going to be accepting of anything like a maybe a second round pick and then a player the Dolphins don't want. I don't think they'd be willing to take a deal like that. But uh, my good friend Ron Caniff, he has some different opinions on the Jonathan Taylor situation. I'm going to go ahead and let him talk about that and what we he thinks that they should do. But before we get into that, just want to go ahead and mention that, as always, this show is brought to you by our good friends over at You Break Wheel Fix. You Break Wheel Fix is the complete automotive wheel solution. Ever parked too close to the sidewalk curb? You Break Wheel Fix specializes in the repair of damaged wheels from bends, cracks, and curb rash. Or maybe your wheels are faded or peeling. You don't need to replace them, as You Break Wheel Fix can and refinish them to like new. Offering complete refinish options through powder coating, machining, and polishing, U Brake Wheel Fix is the answer to all of your wheel needs. And if you're just looking to give your ride a new look, U Brake Wheel Fix also offers many car customizing options, such as new custom wheels and tires from your favorite brands, performance upgrades, window tinting, and suspension modifications. Located just south of Aventura, you can reach Mark and his staff at 305 748 0112 or online at ubrakewheelfix.com. They are really active on all social media platforms that you break wheel fix. So shoot them a DM on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter and get an estimate in just minutes. So don't delay. Go to you break wheel fix and start customizing your ride to show off your Dolphins fandom today. This show is also brought to you by prizepicks.com. Prizepicks.com is a revolutionary fantasy platform where you can now pick up to six different players across professional sports leagues. Whether that's the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, one of each, it's up to you to decide. Just choose whether your chosen player will get more or less than their projected stat. They give you free squares, such as right now, live, the Dak Prescott free square for September 10th. If Dak Prescott throws for more than one yard, that square is automatically a win for you. They also have special Taco Tuesday promos and Flex Friday specials where you can get your money back if you lose or multiply the amount of money you can normally win. With offers like that, it's hard to justify not signing up if you're any kind of a fantasy sports fan. So use the promo code 5, that's F-I-V-E, and they will match up to $100 on your initial deposit when you sign up. Again, that's promo code 5, F-I-V-E. Go to prizepix.com, deposit your $100, take advantage of that free Dak Prescott square, and get started winning today. All right, Ron, so let's go ahead and get into this. So as I mentioned before, you have a little bit of a different opinion on the whole Jonathan Taylor situation than I do. I am of the opinion that Jonathan Taylor and trying to acquire him, the whole reason I wanted Dalvin Cook is because, number one, Dalvin Cook would not have required us to give up anything other than some salary cap space. It was a free, just he was a free agent. He was completely untouched. It wasn't going to have to cost Miami anything to add him to the roster. So for that, I was like, okay, let's go get Dalvin Cook because, the Dolphins don't have to give up a third round or a fourth round. They don't have to give up nothing. All they do is add. In the case of Jonathan Taylor, the Dolphins are going to have to give up something. Number one, they're actually going to have to probably give up some draft capital. They're probably going to have to give up a player or two, and they are going to have to give Jonathan Taylor a whopping contract, which we do not even know yet. Even because we just finished recording Pulse Defense Nation, just for the sake of context for everybody. And Alfredo Artiaga, who was on the Three Yards Per Carry host, he was on to kind of break down the math of it all. We're going. He was going on the assumption that okay, Jonathan Taylor wants to be the highest paid running back in the NFL, which would put him at about eighteen million per year. All right, that's fine, and he gave a good explanation for why that would work as far as the monetary value. But that's going under the assumption that Jonathan Taylor will be content with just eighteen million. The the, the here's what I'm going to talk about. This is something I didn't mention on Pulse. Is that all of the NFL's running backs just basically had like a union meeting to talk about how they are going to make it so that they will start earning more cash. And if Jonathan Taylor walks in and just says, oh, I'm content just making more money than everybody who else is in the NFL, is that really going to solve anything for the rest of his constituents? Or are they going to go ahead and say, why do we even have this meeting when we all know it's every man for himself at the end of the day? I first personally feel like Jonathan Taylor has more value on himself than just, oh, just make me the richest running back by just a tiny bit and I'll be happy. I think he's going to want more than that. I'd probably want like make 20, 22 million per year. And at what point do we feel like, okay, it's too much. It's not worth it, even for a guy who is arguably the best running back in football. I am not somebody who is of the opinion that you get Jonathan Taylor at all costs, including the cost that it would take to actually keep him around. So I'm going to go ahead and let you talk now, Ron, and kind of you give your case here. Well, I can't speak to how much Jonathan Taylor wants. 
or what his contract is going to be. I, I just don't know that. I don't have that information. I can only speak to is it worth trading draft capital slash and or players for him? And I say 100% yes. Now, you know that I wasn't big on the whole Dalvin Cook thing. If we had signed him, I was like, okay, cool. He makes the running back room better. Jonathan Taylor makes the Miami Dolphins offense probably the best in the NFL. Dalvin Cook didn't move the needle like that, man. Like this, having probably what you could consider maybe the best receiver in the NFL and probably what you could consider the best running back in the NFL, along with some of the other players that we have and Tua out there dealing, man, especially what what would look like we're trying to build as far as the, the run game that we've seen so far in the couple preseason games. Man, putting Jonathan Taylor back there, that that changes the game. That changes how defense have to have to defend us. <clears throat> Even if we continue to run the ball successfully, more in like a San Fran style kind of like they used to back in the day, or still do really, uh, like we've seen in preseason, yeah, teams are going to have to start to learn how to defend that. They're going to have to cheat the linebackers up a little. Man, you put Jonathan. Uh, this is what you thought about. This is what you thought with Cook, Lewis. You thought that we would add Cook, and then, man, they got to defend us. They got to defend Cook. They got to defend Cook. I just never really felt like Cook really changed the game like that. I don't think they did. Jonathan Taylor absolutely does. He changes the game for us. He he changes the 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 math for the defense trying to defend this. He really does. And he he helps the offensive line because they'd rather run block and they're better run blockers. And we have tight ends that are pretty much just run blockers. They're really not pass catchers. And as Alpha had mentioned before, right, uh, on the other show, if you go see it, we have one of the better fullbacks in the NFL. Um, by the way, we ran that 200 and something yards and never even used a fullback. Ningle didn't play. We never even used a fullback. We ran that 200 plus yards in preseason. So there's a lot more to this run game that, that we could see that we haven't yet. Man, it, it, I mean, that when I think about that Chargers game, which I'm really nervous about because what the Chargers did to our offense, no other defense did to our offense last year, including San Fran. No other defense did that. You put Jonathan Taylor back there. They ain't doing that. They cannot defend Miami the way they did last time. And then as the linebackers decide, okay, we got to push up. We got to cheat. We got to stop this run. That makes the stuff that Miami was doing last year e even more effective. All, all the deep in, uh, deep down the field, middle of the field type stuff, 12, 15, 20 yards um, <laughs> down into the middle of the field, those pinpoint accurate passes from Tua, one of the few quarterbacks in the league that can make those types of throws. I mean, that that opens that up even more. And then if they go decide to cheat up, we're going to stop that. Then we can start running it on them again. It makes it really difficult. I think I know that's the plan anyway from Miami, and that's really what they want to do. Plus, running it more, I think, protects your quarterback because when you're handing it off, you're a lot less vulnerable than when you're uh, just throw, sitting back there and trying to throw it 35 or 40 times. But... I, you put Jonathan Taylor there, and it really allows us to do that big time. It's like an instant, whoa, holy crap. This team is going to be extremely hard to defend. They're hard to defend now, but they're going to be really, really hard to defend. And I, I just I believe it's worth a lot. I also think that Miami would I, – I know that McDaniel would probably consider it more than anything because he saw his, his uh, previous co head coach, Shanahan, go pull a move like that last season with McCaffrey. He went and pulled off a big trade to get McCaffrey. Uh, it's probably not something I wonder if he even thought that Shanahan would do previous to that. I think maybe he even was a little surprised because when McDaniel was there, they were just, they were recruiting backs, uh, so to speak. They were kind of grooming them, eyeballing them years ahead of time and thinking, here, here, he's the kind of guy I want. He's the kind of guy I want. Like we know that we've heard the story that McDaniel was kind of, you know, grooming or, or eyeballing or had his had his eyeballs on Jeff Wilson way before he was in the NFL. Same thing with A-Chain. A few years before he was in the NFL, McDaniel had his eyeballs on him. That's the way they normally were doing it. I think they've been doing that. Uh, Greer's been doing that with cornerbacks too, but that's different conversation. Uh, I mean, that's that's not what Shanahan did last year. He went and traded a boatload to go get Christian McCaffrey. So uh, I can't speak to how much money they'll have to pay him. I, I really don't know.
But uh, I'm for spending some draft capital. Now, I don't want it to be a first, and I don't think it's going to be a first because as a head coach, you're pretty much saying, no, we don't want to pay you because we don't think your position is worth it or we you are worth it to be or to pay you. And then turn around and tell the team, oh, no, we want we want a first and a this. We want a first and a third. But he's not that valuable. You're pretty much stating he's not that valuable because you don't want to pay him. We're not giving you a first and a third. Uh, so he's kind of hurt himself there, right? Um, I think there's a chance that we could get him. I, I don't know that it's a big chance. I think we could be, get him for under a first-round pick, like, say, a second-round pick. And I can't speak to everybody's talking about, oh, Ogba and Wilson, Ogba and Wilson. Well, wouldn't that be wonderful if it worked out so perfectly? You know, oh, we, we, we trade Ogba and we trade Wilson. Well, it's not always going to work that way. Just because we'd like to offload those contracts doesn't mean the Colts want to automatically take those players. So I don't know that any kind of player trade, especially in regards to Cedric Wilson or Ogba, they might trade Jeff Wilson. They might even trade Mostert as part of that because then, yes, the Colts would need a running back. But uh, and, and those guys aren't super expensive. So that's a possibility. I don't know if it would happen, but it's a possibility and helps you helps ease it a little bit. But uh, I think it's worth it. I, I honestly think it's worth it. I think it truly changes the entire game for Miami. Um, and I think it, it would make Miami, I mean, besides the Chiefs, you always have to be, put the Chiefs at one, but I think it would make them the second most likely team to get to the Super Bowl in the AFC. All right. So now I don't know if you made this clear or not, but at what point does it become too rich for your blood? From a picks perspective or a money perspective? Um, I, I, more than a second round pick. I mean, if it was a second round pick and they took – Ogba, well, you think, well, that's a lot. Yeah, but that helps us financially, so I wouldn't hate that. Um, anything more from pure picks perspective, more than a second, I can't do it. I, I can't give them a first. I just can't do it. And um, money-wise, man, I don't know. I, I can't see paying this guy more than $17, 18000000 million in a year. I mean, that's a lot of money, too. That's a shit ton. Probably can't do that, but they'd have to – Definitely resign or extend Wilkins. They'd have to do stuff to even make that work. But uh, I don't. I have no clue what he wants. I'm not sure what kind of contract he's looking for. Uh, I'm not. I hadn't even looked at McCaffrey's contract to see what he's making per year. Well, um, I was actually looking up the Christian McCaffrey trade just to kind of get some kind of a basis because we're people are talking about Christian McCaffrey like he's the best running back in football. But there are now people talking about how Jonathan Taylor is the best running back in football. In fact, I, there were people in the comment section of Pulse of Fins Nation talking about how Christian um, Jonathan Taylor is basically just as good as Ricky Williams was back in the day. Now, I don't know how you feel about that, but yeah, I uh, need to. I got some emotional attachment to Ricky, so I, I don't know about. I, I can't say that as a Dolphins fan, that, but I, I haven't seen Jonathan Taylor enough to, you know, I mean, Ricky Williams, run, Ricky, run. Come on, man. All right. I so I can't get I, behind I, that, but that doesn't mean that Jonathan Taylor is not extremely good and probably more of a conventional running back. Jonathan Taylor is the best in the league as a, as a utility weapon. I would say I give it to Christian McCaffrey because he just does so many things. He's just so versatile. He's got to be the, one of the most versatile backs, maybe the most versatile players and offensive players in the NFL. Uh, so I guess on, on full versatility, McCaffrey, just a pure running back, uh, Jonathan Taylor, but he still catches the ball too, and he can still block too. Yeah, he's a great – Jonathan Taylor's a great player. He's one of the top backs in the league. So I would like to point something out to you, Ron, and this is very interesting the way that it's actually set up. Christian McCaffrey, back when he signed his contract, it was with the Carolina Panthers. Okay. And so the Carolina Panthers, this was uh this is what it says on Spot Track, right? His his contract was he signed a four year, sixty four million dollar contract with the Panthers. And here's you ready for what his caps his cap hits are? I'm ready for, for it. So in 2020, he cost 7.7 against the cap. In 2021, he cost 6.8 against the cap. In 2022, that was his first year here in San Francisco. He cost $690,000, not even a million dollars, because Carolina was paying most of it. Okay. Yeah. 2023, he costs $3.4 million against the cap. That's it. $3.4 million for him. And then in 2024... 14 million 2025 14 million yeah. but i look i'm gonna look, but i'm just gonna go ahead and look real quick here at this if 
the if the Carolina if for whatever reason the San Francisco 49ers decided that they wanted to move off of Christian McCaffrey next season they could easily do it and save $12 million in cap space and they can cut him with $2 million in dead cap. Okay. So Christian McCaffrey's co- uh, contract was already very easy to swallow. It's not like the 49ers gave up a lot to get him. He, they were oh, looking at him. Oh, wait, in as, money, how, but have we looked up picks? In money, I mean, yes, picks. but in money. But Ron, but that's what I'm talking about here. In money, yes, they gave up. Here's what the, here's what the 49ers gave up to, in order to get Christian McCaffrey. They gave up a second, a third, and a fourth round pick and a fifth round selection in 2024. So four draft picks. None of them are first rounders, but they gave up three picks in 2023 and a fifth rounder in 2024 right. to get their hands on Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, that's Would a lot. Would you do that deal for, so you wouldn't no, do that deal for many. Jonathan Taylor? No, that's too much. I think they gave up too much for McCaffrey, but but no team knows how to use him like, like Shanahan. So for them, it was probably worth it. Any other team would probably be silly. Even Miami, I, I would. that's too much. No, a lot of people were saying that the Panthers won that deal anyway. But here's my—I I don't know because he's uh, man. They, I mean, the Niners showed. Uh, here's how you. Here's how you use a player like this. Like, like they made they made Carolina look foolish because they're like, here's how you make Carolina. Here's how you make. Uh, uh, here's how you use McCaffrey. McCaffrey. Like they, they they used him like nobody else. Like this is how he should have been used from day one. Um, yeah, no, that's that's too rich. For me, it's too rich. But however, you got to consider it's going to be like a trade off there. We'd be giving up less in draft capital, but we'd probably be paying more initially, at least in um, in money. So in cap right. space, so that's, so what I'm kind saying, of a, that's what I'm for saying. For Miami, it's a trade off. We we need to try and conserve at least some of our picks. I mean, we keep between the tampering and the trades of of Hill and Bradley Chubb. I mean, we've really Jaylen eaten through Ram- our picks. And I'm sorry, and Ramsey, it, it, and and that's from and that's from a monetary standpoint. Like yeah. I know you're looking at the draft picks. I know you're looking at the draft picks, and I know why because we're gonna need some of those draft picks in order to replace the guys we're inevitably gonna lose in the in the years to come. Yeah, like I don't like I don't even mind giving up Xavier Howard just so everybody. Yeah, understands. because he's, it's getting to a time where it's yeah, he's it's, getting he's older. Be gone. And yeah, and eventually he's gonna reach a point where it's like yeah, it's gonna he's be Cam Smith and Cater Kohu. And Katakohu. And yes, maybe exactly. Nick Needham if he's well, still around or something Jaylen like that Ram- eventually. Jalen Ramsey's going to stick Ramsey around. Ramsey will be around a couple of years, but probably by next year we won't have X anymore, but we'll still have enough backs. But that be that as it may. Yeah, X is one that you're going to lose. I think Sealer is one. If we even had a chance to keep Sealer before, I already year, Sealer's gone. I, wasn't, I was not holding my breath for that. Yeah, I don't think I you'll have Sealer anymore. So it'll probably be, will it be Raekwon? Will it be another guy? Will it be somebody we've groomed? We don't know. Yeah, you're going to give up a player somewhere along the way you're just gonna it's 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 a trade-off man you got to decide what the best you know greer has to decide mcdaniel greer they have to decide what is this worth it well if we do abc do does def happen you know (laughs) and and is that uh is that a plus or or a or a minus overall for miami they'll make that decision for this year jonathan taylor probably makes us the best offense in the NFL. Maybe the second best. It's it's hard to put any offense when you uh, over the one that has Patrick Mahomes but and, and Travis Kelsey. But uh maybe the second best uh, offense in the NFL. It, it's it's a game changer, man. It's a huge game changer and and again when you're running the ball that much and it protects Tua, it helps the offensive line. It, it's just it's a huge plus for us. I don't know if we can pull it off. Uh, I really don't. Alf put the percentage at what twenty percent. I put it at like thirty. I mean, these are all obviously arbitrary numbers we're pulling out of our butt. But um, I, I don't know that they'll make it happen. But man, if they could, who man, if they could, you know, this is bigger to me than even trading for Derrick Henry it, for me. And I love Derrick Henry. I was like way more for let's trade back when we thought we were going to try and possibly trade for Dalvin Cook. Right. And there was talks of Cook and there was a little bit of talk of Henry. I was more like, oh, I'd love to have Henry, Henry, Henry. But I just didn't think they could make it happen. So I I didn't get excited about it. Uh, I don't know if they can make this happen, but I am unfortunately gotten myself a little bit excited about it because just the thought of being able to add a caliber running back to this offense, to this team right now, to a team that is looking to run the ball as it is already. And we'll be doing it with guys who aren't really huge names, but. Uh, I think they're going to still be able to run the ball extremely well, 
even if they don't sign Taylor, even though they didn't sign Cook, I think they could sign. They can run the ball extremely well. But man, Jonathan Taylor makes sure they can run the ball extremely well. That that's for sure. All right, so. I think we've both set our pieces. We're going to be keeping an eye on this, obviously, as the days go on. We still have to go through one preseason game. We're going to be facing off against, I can't remember. The Jags. The the, the Jacksonville Jaguars? Yeah. I, th- or no, I thought it was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. No, I think it's the Jags. Hold on. Now, now, now I need to confirm. No, it's no, it's definitely the Buccaneers. Hold on. Oh, you're right. It's the Jaguars. <laughs> Why did I think the Buccaneers? I don't know because we usually play them every year, and we just did. This is we true. We always year. usually seem to play them every year. Okay, so it is the it is the Jaguars. Yep, so, yep. oh my, uh, no, so uh, all right. Well, Saturday, way. seven p.m. Another Saturday game. God, I wish they'd stop these Saturday preseason games. <laughs> don't they know people well, have lives? <laughs> do we have lives, Ron? We always stop everything yeah. to do football. Yeah, my life is football. My my wife doesn't like that so much though. That I spent my last Saturday night, and I'll spend another Saturday night watching football. <laughs> that means Sunday is open. Yeah, that's true. And we have for another two two Sundays, right? This and the next Sunday, and then after that, sorry, honey. then <laughs> Sundays are closed. We're closed for business. <laughs> See you in February. Alrighty. So that's going to be it for this show. Thank you all so much for listening. Once again, if you have not already done so, go check out You Break Wheel Fix. If you need to get your wheels fixed up, or if you just need to give your ride a new look, 305-748-0112 is the number to call. So you can go there, or you can go online at youbreakwheelfix.com and get an estimate in just minutes. And of course, go to pricefix.com, use that promo code 5, that's F-I-V-E, and they will match up to $100 on your initial sign-up deposit when you use that promo code. And again, the Dak Prescott free square is there. It's yours for the take do not let it go you can win some big time cash if you know what you're doing and Dak Prescott is right there free for you to win with are we sure it's free like it's the only chance that Dak Prescott isn't there a good chance Dak Prescott throw his first pass as an interception then gets hurt I mean the question is not out of the realm of possibility I mean yeah if you want to go with that (laughs) 0.01 percent chance that Dak Prescott are we really thinking it's 0.01 because I put it at 0.01 that Dak throws an interception and gets out for the out for the game yes I think that those like those scenarios very unlikely if Dak throws one yard you I like they'll probably start him off with like a screen pass to the running back is that the preseason game by the way that they're talking about no, that's the first regular season. Oh, game. So, they have, so all of you guys out there, you have plenty of time to go to Price Picks and use that code. All right, that's going to be it for this show. Thank you for listening. We'll see you all tomorrow for another episode of Fins Nation.